Europe gets around 45% of its natural gas from Russia. Hungary, Slovakia, Austria and Germany are amongst the most energy dependent. And the EU has pledged to cut its reliance on Russia by two thirds this year. The union's been looking at alternative sources of oil and gas and the potential includes Algeria to Turkmenistan and beyond. Kadre Simpson is the EU Commissioner for Energy. I'm very grateful the Commissioner is joining us uh, tonight. Thank you, ma'am. It's, it's good to look. Let's let's the I saw your speech today about geothermals and I've seen your comments. The reality is it's not going to be easy, as the Commission president has said, to wean Europe off oil and gas in short order. Well, indeed, but for Europe, this is a turning point. There is a strong consensus that we must uh, end our dependence on Russian energy as soon as possible. And, uh, and uh, it is clear that uh, it is very challenging, but it is doable. And, uh, and as you mentioned, well, more than 40% of our gas comes from Russia. And uh, this is about 155 billion cubic meters a year. And most of this is pipeline gas. It cannot be replaced um, overnight. Uh, but we believe that we can uh, increase so the LNG deliveries uh, by around 50 PCM annually. And, and in fact, um, LNG deliveries have already increased significantly, and particularly from the United States. So this has helped us this winter. And, uh, and uh, we do have also good contacts with other reliable partners, uh, with some of uh, uh, we do have pipeline uh, right. but it looked it looked and perhaps it is self-serving within Europe not to sanction the one thing that would have deprived Russia of most of its revenue which is oil and gas now I understand there would have been a price to be paid by European countries, particularly Germany. But it looks self-serving that those countries weren't prepared to do it. Well, we just adopted the fourth package of sanctions since the beginning of the war. And there has never been a response on this scale by European Union and in such close coordination with our allies. And, and these sanctions are actually working. So we see the effect on the Russian economy already. The stock market is closed and ruble has lost half of its value and the companies are fleeing the country. So we have imposed sanctions also in the energy sector to uh, exporting energy technologies to Russia. And, uh, and we have also banned any investment in the Russian energy sector. So um, what we are doing in parallel is reducing the amount of Russian energy we consume. So we cannot stop using it overnight, but we can make this uh, uh, pro progress uh, very fast. And, and we are determined to do that. Is nuclear power part of your grand plan to wean off Russian oil and gas, and indeed for the energy transition. Now, look, I agree. Nice to have wind, solar, geothermal. All of these will play a part. I'll give you that. But nuclear power will give it in large doses and actually perhaps is the key. Are you countenancing that? Well, we are um, well uh, counting on all the alternatives. So, uh, yes, we have uh, um, mapped all the additional gas volumes that we can get from our partners, well, starting with Azerbaijan and Algeria or LNG from United States, Qatar or Egypt. Uh, we are also well planning to double our own biomethane production. And then, of course, uh, where we consume natural gas a lot, this is housing. We have to renovate buildings so that we can save right. gas. Then electricity okay. production. Commissioner, all the other com alternatives are Commissioner yes. I want to, I'm asking you though, you know, it sounds like Europe's trying to make an omelette without breaking eggs. Are you prepared to say that nuclear power must be part of the energy solution? Nuclear has always been part of our energy solution. Now, even uh, with our long term goal to become climate neutral, we always have counted that par partially our consumption will be covered by nuclear power plants. And as you look now at the at the way in which I mean, look, it's really difficult. This this is impossible, isn't it? Whichever way Europe moves on this is going to be difficult and painful. What would your message be to Europeans tonight? 
Well, we are keeping a very close eye on the security of supply situation, and we are making sure that our contingency plans are up to date. But uh, on top of that, there are other work streams. So we are helping Ukrainians where we can. And then, of course, we have to well uh, keep in mind that, uh, that we do have vulnerable consumers whom we have to support uh, from our side. But well, right now, I think that the most important thing that we can do here is helping Ukraine. So uh, we are planning to uh, link the Ukrainian electricity grid to the European one to keep their system stable. This is the least we can do uh, from my field of responsibility. And then, of course, uh, we have to well um, send them necessary commodities, so gas, gold, diesel, other supplies. And that's what we are doing. But in medium term, we are preparing for the next heating season in the way that uh, our uh, dependence on Russian gas and oil will be significantly smaller than it was last year.